Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a self-submitting form in PHP and use functions in order to display a customized output based on the user's selection. On my screen, I have the beginnings of a PHP script and I'll just go through what we have so that you can see where we're starting out. Right, I have a print here doc where we have print the three less than symbols and then my identifier. So I just call this form. And then the closing identifier is down here. So this matches the opening identifier exactly. And it ends with a semicolon. And what that allows me to do is just to type in a whole bunch of HTML in here without having to quote it like we would normally have to do if we were using print or echo commands. So what my script does right now is it contains the HTML for a form. So we have the opening HTML tags, um, the head tags, the title tags, opening form tag. The action is empty, so the form will submit its own information back to itself. And then we have a select list with a few different options for music types and then a submit button. And that's pretty much the end of what we have. I just have the closing PHP tag down here. When I save this and I upload it to my server, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so we have a form with drop down options and then a submit button. So if I select one of these options and I click Submit, we can see here that the form information is being submitted back to itself and it is appending the URL with music equals and then whatever option was selected. So if you just take a quick look at how this works, the select name is music. So when the form is submitted, it takes this and it says music equals and then either one of these four options based on the option that the user selected. So I selected jazz, so it says music equals jazz. So that means your PHP script is going to get music equals jazz. So by default, as soon as the PHP script runs, it displays the form. So it's automatically just going to run this code. So maybe we don't want it to display automatically. We want it to display based on whether some information has been submitted or not. So let's put this into a function. So I'm going to create a function that's just going to display the form. So in PHP, we'll say function, and I'm just going to call it show form, right? And then it's going to be inside a block of curly braces. So this is going to open my show form function. And then down here, after my ending form, I'm going to put in a closing curly brace. And just to comment it out, I'm going to say end show form. Because sometimes you get a lot of curly braces and it can get a little confusing as to what is opening and closing what. Now if I save this and I'm going to upload it to my server, you pause this and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to refresh the page. And I'm also going to come in here, I'm just going to take out this information that was added so we can just see the form all by itself, right? So it's empty now. And that's because when we created this function, PHP does not automatically run any functions until they're called. So I'm going to put in a command in here to call the show form function. So let's just say show form open, close parentheses, and semicolon. So now this will say, okay, when the PHP scripts, the script executes, do the show form function. So then it's gonna come down here and then it will display this. So again, I'm going to save this and I'm going to upload it to my server and we'll test it out. Okay, so now I'm going to refresh my page and now my form appears back again. All right, so I have a function set up to display the form, but we can control when it's being displayed based on when we call our function. 
Next, let's look at how to get our program to just show the form if the Submit button hasn't been clicked. So what we'll do is we'll build in here, we have to build in some, some basic logic, what we want it to do when. Now there's a few ways of going about determining whether the Submit button has been clicked. Right down here in the form, our input type equals submit, value equals submit. That creates our submit button. So we want to determine whether that has been clicked. So one method is we can say if dollar sign underscore post and then submit. So if post submit, what do we want to do if the form has been submitted? Let's say we'll do a print statement that just says form was submitted. Otherwise, else, we'll say show form. So if submits clicked, we're going to say form was submitted, else do the show form function. So I'm going to save this and upload it to the server and let's test it out. All right, so I'm just going to refresh this. So now it seems to be working. Uh, it says it's displaying the form since the form hasn't been submitted. So let me try changing this to something and then we'll say submit. But now that's doing the same thing. It is still showing me the form. So there's something going on here. So let's look at a way to tell how to see the variables and information that are being submitted. We know that post hides them. So let's make this a get. Get will allow us to see the information that's being submitted by our form. Because don't forget, here we're looking for submit. So we want to see if this is actually coming through. So I'm going to upload this to my server and then we'll test the form again. Pick one and say submit. And now we can see here that it says music equals and then whatever option was selected before I click submit. But you can see that there's no submit value that's bundled up here. And so that's why we're not getting the message that says form was submitted. So this is a common mistake to make. So if I come down here to my submit button, you can see that you know our other form elements must have a name element. So this has music and this will say music equals whatever the value is that was submitted. But the submit button here, it's easy to forget to leave off the name. So we'll say name equals submit. All right now I'm going to save that and upload it to the server and then we'll test it again. Okay, so I'm just going to take this off and now we'll pick a different one and submit. Okay, now it's working. Form was submitted. And we can see here that the information that was bundled up from the form, we have music and the type, and then it also says submit equals submit. So now we have our if else part working. If submit, and also again, do you want to double check? Another thing that can throw you off is the capitalization, right? This is a lowercase s, and so the name here has to be a lowercase s. If they don't match, then it will be considered two different things by PHP, and then your main logic up here will not work. So now that I can see that that is being submitted properly, I'm going to change this back to post. And I'm going to change my form method back to post. All right, so we have if submits clicked, print the form was submitted. Otherwise, do the show form function. And so that part works nicely. So that's a quick way of doing a self-submitting form using a function. Now let's say we wanted to build onto that and do something more customized based on the user's response. So let's say that we want them, if they picked rock, then we're going to give them some custom information. If they picked hip hop, then they would get a customized page. Uh, if they wanted country, they would get a customized page. So you kind of get the idea. And rather than making separate completely separate PHP or HTML pages, we can embed them all within the same PHP script just using different functions. 
So we're just going to do a real simple little example here, but you can of course get much more complicated and complex. So let's start with rock. They choose rock, then we want to show them some information based on their music preferences. So again, we can come up here to our main logic, and instead of if the submit button was clicked, we can also add on to this now that we know that the form was submitted. Let's just comment that out. So let's say if it was submitted, then we're going to do uh, several condition checks in here. So that means I'm going to need to add in the curly braces for this if, because we're going to have a few different lines of code in here. Okay, so instead of just one line, when we have more than one line, we do need to include the curly braces. And we'll say, we could do a series of if statements, we could do switch statements. So for right now, I'm just going to do a, a couple of if statements. So we could say if, now we want to check to see if the variable music was equal to rock. So we could say dollar sign underscore post, and it would be music. If the variable music was posted and it's equal to the string rock, then let's build a function that says rock. And then we can copy this, and then we can paste it in for each of the other music data types. Right, so we have rock, country, jazz, hip hop. So we change this to rock, country, jazz, and hip hop. And then we'll create functions for each of these. So we can say country, we'll have a country function, we'll have a jazz function, and we'll have a hip hop function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy these lines. We'll build some functions down here. And we'll do a little quick print statement in each one. Nothing too difficult at this time. We'll just say rock was selected. And then we'll do the same thing for country and jazz and hip hop. And then we just change the word. Right, we could always have a lot more in here to do, but at this point we're just looking to see how we can control different things happening based on what was selected out of our form. So I don't think we have any errors in here, so I'm going to save this and upload it to the server, and then we will test it out. So if I do classic rock and roll, submit, rock was selected. I come back, we'll say country, and submit, country was selected. We'll make sure each of these work properly, yes, and submit. Okay, so based on what the user selects from the form, we're able to determine if the submit button has been clicked, and if it's true, then we can have it do some other things. Now in our case, we're just doing a bunch of different condition checks to see, and then based on if it is a match, we send them to a particular function to do something specific for their choice. If submit hasn't been clicked, then it does the show form function. And with that, it comes down here and it displays all of the HTML for our form. 